everyone, how's it going? All things sports play Mike McIntyre here, and I'm here today to bring you a brand new review slash unboxing, I guess, of the new Puma Evo Speed 1.4 SLs. So this is my first time I've ever had the chance to do a video on the on a pair of Puma soccer shoes. I've just been uh, fortunate enough to get my hands on a pair this time, and so right away I'd like to say a quick thank you to uh, a teammate of mine. Heyman Kabiri, I'm going to leave a link to his social media stuff down below in the description. But I just want to say a quick thanks to him because without him this video would not be possible. So as I said before, these these are the Puma Evo Speed 1.4 SL. So brand new shoe by Puma. Um, somewhat of a interesting release. We'll get into that later in the video. But we'll get right into it right away right now. We'll get into the unboxing. So first thing, we'll get the shoes out. And Puma does throw in a little extra gear. And we'll talk about that in a second. So there are the shoes right there. This is the launch colorway. Um, Puma calls this color the Lava Blast. Now I hope it I hope it comes out on camera clear enough. It might look a little orangey. I'll try to uh, edit it in the post-production phase. But um, they are really a darker sort of pinkish orange, I guess is the best way to describe it. Pinkish, reddish orange. Um, and so, like I said, Puma calls it Lava Blast. As you can see, the, the main upper is that Lava Blast color, the sole plate as well, and the laces. And then you have the, the little black accents um, for the Evo Speed branding here. And then you've got your white uh, Puma slash here and the Puma logo on the instep of the foot. Um, and the insole as well is also white, at least on this insole, because Puma does throw in a little extra. So as you can see, it comes in a nice little carrying case, I guess. you attach it with Velcro, you open it up, and Puma throws in a pair of Comfort insoles. So I'll just give you a quick look at those right away. So this is the Evo Speed SL Comfort insole, and just to compare them, we'll take out the one provided, and right away you do notice a big difference. These are much, much thinner. Um, I doubt you'll be able to see it on camera, but if I do a quick little show like that, you might be able to see how how thin these things are. Um, the white ones are, are really, really, really thin. There's very, basically nothing to them. And then these ones do have a quite a substantial amount more of cushion, at least compared to these ones. As far as insoles are concerned, I mean, it's nothing special, but compared to these, these are, I mean, this is almost like paper. Uh, it's the only way I can describe it. Um, there's basically nothing to it. Both of them have perforations throughout, as you can see. Um, but these ones are much, much more present, I guess is the best way to put it. So that's a nice little extra Puma throws in. Um, and you get this nice little case, I get, for, I guess, for them um, if you want to keep it in. So that's the, the case, it's just black, and it says the Puma Evo Speed logo right down there. So we don't need those anymore. I'll take that out, and we'll get right into the discussion of the shoes themselves. So as I said, these are the Puma Evo Speed 1.4 SLs now. Puma has just released the Evo Speed 1.4 and they've come out with several variations of them. They have a synthetic and leather variation of the Evo Speed 1.4 SLs and they also have a leather and synthetic version of the standard Evo Speed 1.4. So this is the SL model um, and I'm sure some of you have heard something about these but we'll talk about that a little later on in the video for now. I'll just talk about the, the materials used, the construction and uh, what the shoe features, it's sort of technology. So the first thing is, we'll start with the upper. Now the upper is as thin as I've ever seen an upper on a soccer shoe. I mean, it's it's actually, it's incredible how thin it is. It's, um, it kind of feels like a, a textile material and I believe Puma actually calls it that. It's made out of a super light, very thin textile upper. Um, textile synthetic, I guess is the best way to describe it. So it's extremely, extremely thin, very, very flexible because it is so thin. Um, I don't think it, it will move as smoothly, I guess, or as, as I'm not sure how to describe it because because it is a textile, right? So a textile tends to be a little bit rougher than say like a, a modified leather that you'll find nowadays on some shoes. However, I have to give Puma credit because it really feels soft. It really feels flexible and Given that is it is a textile sort of material, they've done a fantastic job of giving it a clean sort of touch to it, a clean feel, if you understand what I mean. So, so it is this super super thin synthetic textile material that they use for the upper. 
um, and that goes throughout the entire shoe. There's not much else to, there's not much else tech, if you will, on the on the upper itself. Um, Puma has given the the shoe a sort of internal frame, if you will, and they call it. You can see it here, maybe. Um, it says speed frame right there. So if you can see, when you see these shoes in person, I, person, I hope you can see it on camera. But when you see when you see these shoes in person, you'll notice that the textile is actually see through, and you can see the stability frame, if you will, or the speed frame, as Puma calls it, um, through the actual upper material. So if you can see where my finger is going um, on the inside of the shoe, hopefully you'll be able to see like this webbing pattern. And that is Puma's speed frame technology. It's the same idea that you've seen on, um, you've kind of you've, you've kind of seen it on the on the last edition of the Adidas, um, uh, God, I can't even think of the name right now. The 11 Pros, excuse me. Um, the 11 Pros had this um, sort of internal cage and you notice like this X pattern, this webbing sort of pattern on the inside and then you had the leather on top. Well this is a similar idea in the sense that they've developed this internal frame called the speed frame that keeps the shoe or gives it some sort of sensible construction, some sort of stability because um, without it this material would probably just fold over and have absolutely no structure to it. So that's Puma's way of giving the super super thin material a sense of structure. I guess that's the best way to describe it and they've done a very very good job of of implementing that. I have to give them credit for that because it's so thin it'll keep the shoe stable, it'll keep your foot locked down when you tie the, the laces plate uh, tight when you're making quick cuts or, or running, running around, turning direction. The speed frame will give you that sort of responsiveness and support and stability that you need within a soccer shoe. So that is how the, the upper keeps its shape. Um, and then we'll talk about the, the sole plate. So the sole plate is very similar to a um, speed frame, I guess, from Adidas. It's got your external heel counter here, and it's a very thin layer of um, this hard plastic that, that makes up the sole plate. It also is the reason that this shoe is, well, part of the reason that this shoe is so light, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So you have the the Puma uh, Evo Speed frame, I guess is the best way to describe it, in the sole plate. And then they've implemented, because it's so thin, it's extremely thin as you can see, probably see there, um, they've implemented this speed track system. So if you can see these two sort of spines that run through the midfoot of the shoe, that will allow the, the sole plate to have a lot of stability and responsiveness. Uh, without it, because of its thin nature, it's probably a little bit too flexible and a little bit too unforgiving if you understand what I mean. So Puma has implemented this speed track system that progressively gets stiffer in here so that the shoe has some support, it has a lot of stability, and your foot isn't slipping out of it, put it that way, as you're, as you're running around. So, so that is the, the construction, I guess, of the, of the sole play. And then we'll just talk about the stud pattern quickly. So as you can see, um, they have a mixture of conical studs and bladed studs. So you have four conical studs up here in the forefoot. You've got one interesting sort of pivot stud, I guess, and heel right here, and I'll talk about that in a second, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five bladed studs. So first things first, I mean these studs, I hope you can see, their profile is quite long. They're they're extremely aggressive. Um, and I guess I guess it has to be in a, in a shoe that's so light that it that encourages speed and and acceleration and that sort of market. Um, the longer and the more aggressive the sole, the the studs, the the better the shoe will will perform at least for that sort of category that sort of marketing so so hopefully you can see that that they are long because they are quite long compared to a well at least compared to other shoes so you've got like you said like I've said you got the bladed studs here this is kind of your stability stud in the middle and then you've got your conical studs in the toe that will allow you to to pivot and twist and turn and I believe that's the the same idea with this one here it might it might shed weight I mean you've got a, a less one less stud in the heel and you have a few less studs in the forefoot in total, to be honest, compared to some other shoes. But I'd, this one looks quite interesting in the sense that when you're pushing off, you might be able to turn and you get some leverage with your heel. So I think that might be the idea behind this one. Again, I'm not sure with that, but it's an interesting sort of stud pattern. And from what I've seen online and, and in description from Puma, it won't, it won't, um, it won't, ru like, I'm not sure how to describe it, but it won't ruin that sensation of the four studs in the heel. I think it still provides the same sort of feel, the same sort of stability. It won't provide any unnecessary stud pressure in comparison to with the traditional four studs in the heel. So very interesting uh, idea from Puma. I think it'll do quite well. Um, so that is the that is the 
pretty much the overall explanation or technology of the upper and the, the sole plate and the entire construction of the Puma SLs. Um, and the last part of the video, I'd just like to talk about the sort of disclaimer that's come with these shoes, just in case you haven't heard. And I'll just talk about the weight quickly. So um, these have weighed in at, if I'm not mistaken, three and a half ounces or equivalent of 103 grams or something like that. And for anyone that knows any sort of history on, on the lightweight soccer shoe game that's kind of been going on for the last five or six years, um, this is as light as, as it can get. I mean, the only thing lighter that was actually produced was that 99 gram F50 Addy Zero by Adidas. I believe that came out in, I believe that was about April. But like, those were such a limited, a limited release and, and I'd, I don't, I don't remember how many pairs were actually released to the public, but very, very, very few people were able to get their hands on a pair. This, on the other hand, is a commercial release, I guess, or a, an actual product that anyone can really, you know, you fork out the money for, you can get your hands on a pair. And these are 103 grams. That's 3.6 ounces. That's pretty much half the the weight of the next lightest shoe on the market. You know, the, the I believe the Mercurial Vapor is up at five nine or six or low sixes or something like that in ounces um the f50 i mean the f50 technically doesn't exist anymore but the 2015 f50 was in the the seven ounce range and uh the x's i believe are in the seven ounce range the super flies are there a lot of shoes sit in that seven ounce range um and these are three and a half ounces so that's half the weight of those so it's an incredible accomplishment if you will from puma it really is and it, i mean when you when you get these in your hands, it's it's, I mean it's not as um, I don't think it's as shocking as it has been in the past when when the light shoe game sort of started. You get your hands on a pair of Addy Zeros. I remember the first time I picked up, I held a pair of the of the Addy Zeros for the first time, and I was like, wow, this is just like nothing I've ever felt before. But this almost replicates that feeling because they are, it's like picking up paper. It's like, it's almost hard to believe that these can actually, be used and. That brings me into my my next point. So, bottom line is, if you want the lightest shoe on the market, this is what you're gonna get. They, it's it's absolutely incredible how light they are. But with that said, um, I'm gonna show you the warning that Puma has put on. So there, on this shoe right there, there's there's a sticker on the bottom of the sole plate if you can see that. Um, and I'll just read it for you, quote unquote, just so you know what it says. So it says. The Evo Speed SL is not for training days. It is for your best days, your match days. It may only be used on real grass and in fair weather conditions. A non-compromised lightweight pro proposition, this product is about speed, not endurance, but the moment it creates will last forever. So essentially, Puma has put on this disclaimer, if you will, or a warning to tell you that this shoe won't last very long. and. Online, Puma has gone to say that this will last up to 10 games. 10 games. So, I believe these cost $250 US. So, that's basically 25 bucks a game you're paying to play in these, assuming it lasts the 10 games. It could last less, it could last longer. I guess time will tell. Um, but Puma has come out and said, you know, that these are only for natural grass surfaces in decent weather if you wear them in pouring, pouring rain or or very, very harsh conditions, they won't last as long. If you wear them on turf, chances are they won't last as long. Uh, they definitely won't last as long if you wear them on turf. Um, so take that warning with a grain of salt, if you will, because Puma has basically said they won't last very long, and I guess that's the trade-off. So um, in my opinion, this shoe doesn't, doesn't attract me. I don't think I would purchase it because, I mean, it's just not my style. Even the, the normal Evo Speeds, I, it's just not my sort of um, shoe, my kind of preferred shoe. But but as far as a manufacturing standpoint, as far as an accomplishment, I think this is an incredible release from Puma. I think the times that a player does get out of them, I think they're going to enjoy every, every moment they spend in the shoe because it really is a phenomenal feat, if you will. Um, so I think in that aspect, I have to tip my hat off to Puma because they've done an incredible job releasing this extremely soft, extremely flexible, very, it, it feels like, it, it It feels in the hand like it would be extremely comfortable on foot, if that makes any sense. So I think it will be a, a very, very good shoe 
while it lasts. So um, if you're interested in a pair of these, I would say go for it if, it if you have the money and if it's something that interests you because I doubt you'll find um, I doubt you'll find another shoe that sort of mimics, mimics this experience. I doubt there'll be anything out there, at least at the moment, that, that replicates this experience that this shoe will provide. So um, that is basically my review of the Puma Evo Speed 1.4 SLs. Um, again, a quick thanks to Payman. Um, I hope he enjoys wearing these because Puma's disclaimer says they won't last very long. So I'm sure he will, and I'm sure anyone else that has gone out and purchased a pair of these, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it because they really feel very, very um, premium and very, very, very light. But again, there's always that durability question. So I guess time will tell to see how long these actually last. But for the time being, um, I can say that this is a very, very impressive release from Puma. So I hope you enjoyed the video. That is my review slash unboxing of the Puma Evo Speed 1.4 SLs. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I will definitely get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and support the channel. It always helps me out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And um, stay tuned. I'll have some other videos coming out shortly. So that is my review again. Thanks, Payment, and take care, guys.